It's a story that ultimately connects cold fish to a warming planet. Many small towns are haunted by unsolved mysteries. Disturbing tales often recalled in the dark of night. But few stories are as unsettling as the one that's troubling this small town on the desolate Namibian coast. By any account, this was a strange case. A town that stinks, an ocean that sheds its blue color and coughs up multitudes of dead fish. If this were the plot of a B movie, we'd learn that the town was built on an ancient burial ground. But this is a true story. So what's really going on? Desert rain. And of course, I couldn't ever figure out what rainfall in the desert would have to do with causing these things in the ocean. But one thing that rainfall in the desert would be a reaction to is the passage of a low pressure cell. In other words, an atmospheric storm coming over the ocean. That would lower the pressure on the surface of the water. According to Bakken, as pressure falls on the surface, it will drop on the seafloor as well. Lower pressure uncorks the methane, which in turn releases the hydrogen sulfide. As the bubbles rise, they expand. And this further reduces pressure on the bottom, ultimately triggering an eruption which spreads in all directions. What the gas is, is the bomb. As soon as you start <laughs> moving it up, it causes the explosion. Once it happens, it would happen fast. The eruption theory developed by Curry, Weeks, and Bakken is the most detailed and plausible explanation for Namibia's hydrogen sulfide events. A mysterious phenomenon is now coming into sharper focus. At this point, you might be scratching your head and wondering, what does this have to do with fishing? Good question. The only fish we've seen in this story were dying in droves on a beach. Well, fish, it turns out, are players in this drama, and very lively ones. Or at least they were just a few years ago. Namibia's fisheries used to be among the richest in the world. But by the 1970s, most stocks were nearly wiped out by foreign fleets. We know that 40 years ago, they were catching a million tons of fish every year out of this system. There were enormous numbers of fish here. For one thing, they estimate there were 10 million tons of sardine. Ten million tons of sardines is an incredible number of fish. It's, it's, it's not a hundred million individuals, it's a hundred billion individual fish. You can't get a million tons of fish anymore out of this system. Bakken thinks sardines once played a key role in keeping the lid on the deep sea explosions. They were one of the main fish that could hold their own in the rough currents, where by gorging on phytoplankton, they decreased the source of sediment gases. With the sardine numbers down, he reasons the eruptions could increase in the future. This could be bad news. More explosions could threaten the government's efforts to rebuild the sardine stocks. The eruptions already extend into nursery grounds where they kill young fish and larvae. If that weren't trouble enough, Bakken suspects that deep sea eruptions may be wreaking a second kind of havoc. Bakken and his colleagues have boldly proposed that the eruptions may be adding to global warming. The methane released in the eruptions is, like carbon dioxide, a heat-trapping gas. 
When you get eruptions of methane gas the size of the state of New Jersey, you are putting an enormous amount of a very potent greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Sometimes we lose more than the fish that we take out of the ocean. Could the massive removal of fish really have an effect on the climate system? Andrew Bakken thinks so, and he believes the climate is just the beginning. Who knows what other forces might be unleashed? We're going to find uh, results that were far from what we expected. Uh, certainly, this example uh, shows us how fishing can contribute to global warming. The events unfolding in Namibia could be omens. That's because fishing pressure on plankton eaters is ratcheting up around the globe. Soon, toxic eruptions could be spreading to other pockets of the ocean. 